Whether this is the first time you've listened to a We Are Makers podcast or you've been listening for some time, Kate and I want to thank you for your support and for taking the time to tune in to us. It's Kate and I's mission to further the stories of the makers of the world to more and more people, gaining the makers the recognition that they deserve. For that reason, we would ask you to take two minutes to share this podcast with someone, whether it's on Instagram or however you feel best to share it, send it to someone you feel would benefit from this podcast. And with that, let's get into it. Comfy? I'm very comfy, yeah. Comfortable? Yeah. Great. So I suppose the first question is, who is Ellen Van Dyke? Uh, I'm a 27-year-old stained glass maker, I think. Uh, I don't know what's the word for yeah. maybe stained glass artist. Mm-hmm. Um, from the Netherlands, um, and I've been doing stained glass for, I think, eight years now. Nice. Yeah. Um, I started, I went to college in Antwerp, Belgium, to study stained glass at 19. And after a couple of years, I started working for a big stained glass studio. And as of uh, January this year, um, this is what I'm doing full time. Ah, You have full time in January? Sorry? Congra- you went full time in January. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Sure. Thanks. You made the jump. You made the jump. Well, I mean, so far so good, but <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. It's a no big quite. step to do that, you know? It is a big step. It was, yeah, I was really nervous about it. I, did, I wasn't sure if I, would, if I was making the right decision, you know, but I guess you never know until you try, so. Mm. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> what was holding you back? What made you wonder if you were making the right decision? Uh, mostly financial stability mm. yeah um, it stressed me out thinking about you know me being fully responsible for making enough income to you know pay my rent pay my bills um, and to be able to keep doing that so I'm, I'm able to do it now but who knows what's going to happen in two or three months or next year or so that was what, yeah that's what's holding me back now yeah that's the big one I think for a lot yeah, of people yeah huge yeah but equally, like I would say to everybody, yeah. who knows what you're going to be doing if you're working a normal nine to five. It's true. It's true. Yeah. You could probably make up arguments for everything. So, and yeah. you know what, if it doesn't work out, then it's also fine. At least you've tried it. So I think that's the real powerful bit, words. isn't it? Yeah. So long as you've tried it, you've yeah. tried it. That's the big thing. Yeah, exactly. So 19 years old is when yeah. you first went. Had you always had a fascination with stained glass? No, no. Really? really? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not really. I, I knew I always wanted to be doing something creative because mm-hmm. uh, like from like being a small child, I would always be drawing or painting or doing mm-hmm. whatever creative. Um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I just knew that it wasn't going to be graphic design or anything like computer related because I'm not great with computers. Right. Yeah. I wanted to be doing, you know, something with my hands. Something tactile, hands something on. Something tactile, yeah, exactly. Um, so after high school, I was 15 mm-hmm. when I graduated high school and I went to follow a restoration and decoration painting program. So it was kind of... Um, I wasn't really sure if that was what I wanted to be doing, but I figured because, you know, art is really difficult branch to make money from. So Mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, restoration, there's always going to be jobs for that, you know, so it's kind of like art, but yeah, you know, so, um, yeah, I did that and figured out after the first year that that wasn't what I wanted wanted to be doing. (laughs) But you tried it and that's important. At least I tried it and I finished um, the studies, but we had to do like a semester of stained glass during that program. And that's how I got into stained glass. It's quite good that programs yeah. do that. They kind of give you a little like yeah. um, sneak peek into different parts. Of yeah, the, short of all the different yeah. things, you're yeah. right. Yeah, it was perfect for me because I never, like I always knew that, you know, stained glass is beautiful. I always admired it, but yes. it's not really the first thing that comes to mind, like as a career mm-hmm. option, I guess. So I never considered it until I started doing it. I guess you're not really presented with that opportunity normally are you no. stained glass not really no, no certainly back home my exposure to stained glass is like it's an oldie world day yeah kind of wrapped up primarily around the church would mm-hmm. be where you would see stained glass certainly yeah. painted stained glass yeah um but it's a very old traditional i wouldn't know where to go and get any sort of stained glass no. education at all no. i think you have a pretty good education in york in the uk okay okay and I think there's one in Germany as well, but right. like full-time education is not really a lot of options to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
to go with, unfortunately. Yeah, you kind of just need to make your own, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you went to one in Belgium, right? Bel Bel was it Belgium, you Belgium, said? Belgium, yeah, and yeah. Antwerp, yeah. But it wasn't full-time, it was a part-time um, study. Okay. So, um, I had just finished um, college for the restoration and decoration painting, mm -hmm. and I was um, a little bit fed up of <laughs> with going to school. I just wanted to, uh, you know, get out there, start working. So I, uh, that's why I went with the part-time program. Um, but when I got there, I was 19, and I realized that it was more like a hobby-focused mm -hmm. education program. So. Mm -hmm. Um, most of my classmates were like 60 plus, like pension people, just looking uh, for something okay. fun okay. to do, you know, yeah. to spend, you know. So um, it was it was good, you know, to learn the basics, to get into it a little bit more, but it wasn't really a good um, fundament, I guess, for, yeah. you know, really starting your own business or, you know, right. going to work in a stained glass studio. Um, but I was lucky enough that a stained glass studio hired me after a couple oh, of years, awesome. so... I, that's where I probably learned the most, you know. Did you seek that job out or did they find you? No, 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 I, I saw it, yeah. I, um, I googled stained glass studios in the Netherlands and it just made a list of all of them. <laughs> so wait, and I just emailed all of them and they were the only ones that got applied, actually. Yeah. So, <laughs> good. Good old cold outreach, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. We say this to a lot of makers, like sometimes it is just a case of whether it's trying to sell your work or whether it's trying to like land a new project or just make a list of everybody yeah. and just start emailing every single one exactly. of them. Exactly, you never know what's going to no come from it. There's no harm in reaching out. Yeah, there's no harm, exactly. The, and like you say, yeah. you might email a hundred of them and one might get back to you. Yeah, you yeah. might be enough. on their radar. Exactly, that is enough. Mm -hmm. One is enough. Yeah. So you've gone through the schooling, you've gone through, were you doing this kind of stained glass when you were going through that? Because this no, is very really. unique in what you're doing. Um, not really. I wasn't really interested in painting glass at first. Um, okay. I was more interested in like the technique itself and like geometrical patterns, that kind of stuff. Um, but when I was younger, I used to draw a lot of portraits mm -hmm. and um, like realism kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of like at 16, I I stopped doing that because it, was, it just wasn't satisfying to me anymore. And then I got in stained glass and um, eventually started to learn how to paint on glass and then it all came back. Mm -hmm. and I thought, you know what, maybe it could be cool to bring back that realism and put it into stained glass. Because there's there are windows, stained glass windows, usually from churches mm -hmm. that do the same thing, but it's all like religious mm -hmm. context. Mm -hmm. And you don't see a lot of contemporary stained glass, no. so I no. thought you that don't. might be, you know, something fun to. That was your out. niche. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very cool. So yeah. So you you say that you you know sixteen years old and you kind of fell out of love with painting. It didn't really do it for you anymore. Why do you think the glass gave you the opportunity to get back into it? Because your painting's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. And it feels like like. Did you paint like that when you were painting on paper and when you were painting traditionally? Um, I was usually mostly using uh, graphite pencils to, to draw. Right. So black and white uh, mm -hmm. drawings, and they would be copies from photos. So at first it was really um, fun and satisfying to do because a lot of people would go like, oh my God, that's such a good, you know, yeah. such a realist, mm -hmm. realism, such a, how do I say that? Such a, such real a realistic looking, yeah. depiction yeah. of the photograph, you know? But then after a while, you, you realize that all you're doing is just making copies of like a photograph. Right. So it wasn't really fulfilling to me anymore, mm -hmm. I think. And with stained glass, it's like way more than just painting on glass. Painting on glass is just like a fraction of all the work that you do because you have to make a design, you have to factor in the lead lines, you have to cut the glass, yeah. select the glass, um, grind it, um, paint it and then you have to let it together so it's like an entire puzzle of yeah. things that have to come together it's quite the process <laughs> yeah it is and and now is probably the perfect time to talk about that process i know you've kind of whirlwinded through it there <laughs> yeah. but like, like we, we see it as like painted glass right but there's the the glass aspect and the painting aspect isn't there what yeah. goes into like a piece like this for you uh what do you mean what goes into it like what 
you know, you're you're looking at a stained glass piece and it'd be very easy for someone to be like, that's a beautiful stained glass piece. Mm -hmm. But like you've said, you've got, you've got to decide what you're painting. Mm -hmm. You've got to break it down. You've got to do the, the letting. Is The letting's the, the lead work that brings it together, right? right? You've got to, like, how do you even start breaking these pieces down? <laughs> or well, selecting yeah. the glass? Like, there's different kinds of glass. Yeah, you know, yeah. What, so yeah, it's um, it, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of different kinds of glass. I mostly use um, mouth blown glass. Okay. So it's, um, yeah, it's a traditional um, technique. You can't really tell here, but the mouth blown glass has kind of like bubbles in it and mm. streaks. You can kind of see a couple of them here. Yeah, I, I just love that about it. So that's my preferred type of glass to use. But there's lots of different types. Um, but I usually start with um, a photograph. So for this one, I photograph my friend mm -hmm. and then I turn that into a sketch and then I start mapping out the lead lines. So what makes sense, you know, because you can't do every shape mm -hmm. because it has to, you have to be able to puzzle it together. Right. Um, so it's kind of tricky. Um, and then once you've done that, you can scale it up into full size and start um, selecting the glass that you want to go with. So what I tried to do is I tried to use the color of the glass. So this is a green glass mm -hmm. and I only used um, black and brown paints to, you know, get the lines in and the shading. Ah, uh, okay. This is uh, orange. So you're um, not painting the colors on it, you're painting the shades for, on for, it? For certain pieces. Some pieces, pieces no. For, for the face, uh, you know, skin tone parts, I use clear glass and then I get the color variation by using paint. Nice. Right. And I did that with the dog and a cat a little bit as well, but usually I try to, um, you know, utilize the color of the glass. Mm. And then when you're actually painting it, you know, we, we talked very briefly earlier, it's, it's, it's pigment, isn't it? It's, it's a, like a metallic pigment, did you say? It's a metal oxide, so right. um, glass, um, colored glass gets its color from metal oxides. So when it's being mouth blown or melted, they add in the metal oxides to give it the color that the you know glass needs to be so um, for blue that would be cobalt and for red that's um, gold actually mm. so okay. each each color glass has its own metal oxide and to paint a glass you can use the same metal oxides to uh, you know put a layer on top of top. it so it's metal oxides mixed with finely ground glass I think to fuse into each other so it melts onto itself yeah right and because you're painting and then fusing it together, aren't you? You were saying you've got, your big, you've got the big, big kiln, everything go, everything gets painted. Do you paint it all as individual parts or do you paint it as this one piece? No, as individual parts. parts. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, all individual. Uh, you can only get in a certain amount of layers before you have to fire it in. Right. Um, so I usually get in two or three layers and then that's the max and I have to fire it to be able to continue on it some more. So all of the uh, pieces for this uh, window have been fired I think three or four times and then the phase seven six or seven times wow. wow in order to get to the you know to the level of contrast that you want to go it does look right. super real so it's fire paint metal oxide yeah fire paint fire paint fire paint just yeah. to build so you're building up all these layers exactly yeah it's kind of like painting with oils because mm -hmm. you also paint with layers and you have to wait for the oil to dry in between and then you go back it's kind of similar, but then you have to fire it in a kiln. Ah, so it's quite time consuming. Yes, <laughs> it's really lot, time consuming, yeah. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of, I don't want to say wasted time, but waiting time. Waiting time. Waiting time, yeah, yeah. The, I try to fire my pieces overnight so I can just, you know, fire, like put them in a kiln, load them in a kiln at the end of the day and then come back tomorrow and then, you know, be and able can to you fire all those different pieces at the same time? You can, yeah, if your yeah. kiln is big enough, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's not like a thing where putting different oxides in is going to ruin it or anything. You can, you can at least be efficient with that time, right? I try to be as efficient as possible. <laughs> <laughs> where possible, right? Yeah. And, and you mentioned when we came in, this is not a commission piece, this is just for your own. Yeah. It's really important as an artist to, to keep just being creative and doing your own thing. Yeah. I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't, um, I started doing portraits on glass for my own and based on that I would get commissions. Mm -hmm. So 
I feel like it's important to, you know, do a piece for myself once in a while to be able to show people like, you know, this is what I can also do. Yep. Um, and to maybe get different types of commissions from that because yes. um, I, I did a, um, a commission once with a, for, with a baby portrait oh. and then you get only baby. Baby. people asking yeah. for baby portraits. So you don't want to get stuck in, you know, doing baby portraits forever. So yeah, 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 that's yeah. why I feel like it's important to do your own thing once in a while. Absolutely. And how do you manage that time? You know, one thing we've, we've certainly found is you can get stuck in that rut of doing the baby portraits. Yeah. How do you manage that time to be like, every X amount of time, I'm going to set aside Y amount of time to do mm. my thing? Because mm -hmm. that's what you're doing really, isn't it? It's my thing. Yeah, it is. Um, well, I usually have something like a personal project that I'm working on in the background and right. just depends on like how much time I have left mm -hmm. to work on it. So, um, yeah, I, I always try to have something going at least. And at the same time as all the other stuff. At the same stuff. time, right. yeah, yeah. So it's just filter through it. it. Yeah, I try. think it is. Mm -hmm, I it just can't. feel it's so easy to let that time become the non-important time because it's, right. it's the non-paying time. Because there's always going to be something more important to do. Yeah, paying your bills, putting food on the table. Right? Yeah, exactly. Or yeah, or doing administrative jobs or yeah. catching up with emails. Or There's always going to be something that is more important, but I think this is just also as very important. important. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you never know what this piece might bring you. No, exactly. Yeah. So what tips or tricks would you give other makers listening to this <laughs> to, to make this the more important or certainly more important than the admin or the email like, how, do, uh, how do you manage that <laughs> that's a really good question <laughs> i'm not i'm not the best when it comes to planning so probably not i don't know if i'm the one who should be giving <laughs> advice <laughs> tips on this but um um maybe it's a little bit cliche but try not to underestimate yourself i guess or like the importance of you know, creating your own work. Um, I don't know. That's a really good question. <laughs> Can't think about it. <laughs> yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So the you obviously went into the school inside of it, and then you've developed the actual painting in your style. Mm -hmm. The the leading of it all together. Do you lead it in the sort of traditional sense of how it all goes together? Like how does the lead? It is. It's not glued, is it? It's all lead on lead, mm -hmm. sticking the glass in. Is that more done in a traditional manner? Um, what, what do you mean exactly? The actual Sorry. leading of it all together. Um, yeah. This is the way you would traditionally do stained yeah. glass, isn't it? I mean, normally mm -hmm. we see very, like you say, in churches, very yeah. geometric, squares on squares on squares. Yeah. But the leading is all done in a traditional manner. So is that is. what you were able to bring from working with stained glass? Yeah, yeah. So the um, like everything that I do is done completely in a traditional way. Right. So um, using the same techniques. Um, the only difference is that the um, the subject is yeah. contemporary. Yep. Okay. But everything else is done traditionally. Yeah. Is there anyone yeah. else doing? This, I've certainly not come across it, have you? No. No? Uh, there are. There are a couple of people. I know a lot of good um, stained glass people in the UK, actually. Um, but I feel like it's not as... Um, not shown as much as, mm. you know, other sorts of contemporary art. It's kind of like... Yeah. I feel like people don't really know yet that this can also be done. That's kind of why we want... Like, it attracted me, your work. Because yeah. I was yeah. like, I've not really seen that or don't see it enough. Mm. You don't I think that's to. the work that stands out to us though, isn't it? Because we see so much work. Yeah, yeah. When something's different, it really, really stands out. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So a lot of your custom, you also went full time in January. Mm -hmm. So you've had at least enough custom to get you here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where does it end up going? Is it all for personal clients? Is it is it the, the sort of baby portraits and the people's <laughs> portraits that yeah. end up in frames? Is it that kind of thing that people um, approach you for? A little bit, but what I'm doing mostly is teaching classes okay. now. That's why, I, yeah, that's my like my main income right now. Um, so I teach um, painting on glass classes to people from all over. Yep. And that's so that's my main income. But I would like to shift it a little bit more to making more commission works, or mm -hmm. I would love to maybe get into art galleries, kind of stuff, okay. a little bit to you know 
sell yeah. my work, yeah. but I'm not really sure where it's heading. I never really had a plan, actually, <laughs> just see where it goes, where yeah. it takes me. And uh, yeah, but I'm hoping to shift a little bit more into creating versus, you know, teaching what I'm doing mostly now. Mm. Okay. And how's the classes been? We speak to a lot of makers that do classes and classes seem a do very seem robust be, way yeah. to make a good income. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. Um, it's funny because I never really thought about teaching classes and never really considered it because naturally I'm a very introvert person and could never really, you know, envision myself talking to groups of people. And and teaching, yeah. Teaching, yeah. So it was a little bit daunting at first. Um, but after a while of, you know, uploading my works on Instagram, I got so many questions from people wanting to take a class. So I was like, maybe you should just give it a try, try. and we'll see what happens. Yeah. And it just took off from there. And I remember being really nervous for the first couple of classes, but- I bet, yeah. I bet but, you get good, good feedback though. Yeah, I, I usually get good feedback. So that makes me very happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's been a lot more fun than I imagined at first because you get to connect with all, people all over and- You're teaching them a skill. Which yeah, but I they're think also teaching me, like yeah. I'm learning new things from okay. them like every time. So it's really cool, really interesting. Um, so yeah. when you say you're learning new things from the, let's call them students, that's what yeah. they are. Like what? Like all sorts of things, um, like new tools, for example. Sometimes they bring in tools that I've never seen before and they would okay. show me how they use it. Or um, sometimes just by trying to explain what you do, you kind of gain knowledge. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to put into words, but you... I don't, you kind of understand your own way of working better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, so techniques, uh, some people use different techniques that I've never seen before. They show me how to do it and it, it, sometimes it turns out to be really, really useful. And what are the kind of people like that are coming to your classes? Are they complete new starts or are they people that do stained glass already? Usually people that do stained glass already. Yeah. I have beginner's classes as well. Okay. So that's for people who've never painted on glass before. Um, but uh, mostly I teach the uh, advanced uh, workshops. So that's for people with prior experience in stained glass or painting on glass. So right. Usually those are people who have their own studio or work for a studio. Mm -hmm. And do they oh, come good. here? Do they come here to the classes? Yeah, hey. yeah. <laughs> to the swimming pool. <laughs> to see <swim>. this <laughs> tiny. Yeah, you have to tell pool. everybody. This is like this is so unusual. I've never. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good segue. So, tell us a little bit about this space and where we are right now because it's yeah. it's a bit odd. <laughs> it's, a, it's a swimming pool. Yeah. Uh, it was built in the sixties, and I think it's been out of business for about ten years now, but I'm not too sure. But they just left the entire building as is, uh, drained the pool, and artists are renting out the dressing rooms and the shower rooms right now. It's so, quirky. I like yeah. it. Yeah. It's very quirky. <laughs> and you can actually rent out the pool too. Sometimes people do that for photo shoots or yeah. like meetings or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just come to have so, a meeting in the swim pool yeah. as you yeah. do. Why not? <laughs> How have you found that for someone who's so new to this full time? How have you found that? You know, being in a place where there's, there's sort of two trains of thought, isn't there? There's like, do it in your own house because it yeah. keeps your bills down. Mm -hmm. Or go and find in a shared space. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's networking and I presume there'll be other artists here at very different stages in their, their art career, yeah, their making sure. career. Yeah. How's that been for yeah. you? So the artists that are renting it are all different um, disciplines, yeah. is that how you say it yep. as well? So they're, we're all like into very different kinds of stuff. So that's, I think that's really inspiring. Um, to be honest, I wish I could work from home, but I don't yeah. have the space to do right. that. So I had to, you know, look for a space to rent. Um, um, but it's good to be in like a shared space because uh, I usually work on my own. Uh, so it can get very quiet yeah. <laughs> and lonely sometimes. So this is good. Um, Otherwise you don't yeah. see people for weeks. Do you? No, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. we've been there. Yeah. So, yeah. We've been there. Yeah, yeah. And have you been able are the other artists that are here, are they further on in their art career? Have you been able to take a lot from them? Um, well, it, they're, they're all different kinds of people. Um, um, they're all, not all of them are pursuing it full time. Okay. Um, some of them have just graduated. Others are like near retirement and just doing it as a hobby. Um, okay. But yeah, I don't know if there's anything 
it's yeah. like, yeah. I guess it's just nice to surround yeah, yourself it's, it's with nice other to creative surround people. Yourself. Hey, exactly. some people are just like so yeah. on their own path. No, 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 that's right. Fine. But it's nice to, when, whenever you feel like talking for a bit, you can just walk into someone's studio and have a chat. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah, it breaks the deal. Would you miss that if you moved back home to work from home? Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got a new, new space that I'm renting next month. Um, but it's going to be closer to home, so that's a big plus. And it's also going to be bigger. Oh, nice. So yes, okay. the pluses outweigh this, you know, this place. So, but I'm probably going to miss the social aspect. Yeah. Yeah. This. So will that be your own place, this next place, yeah? Yeah. Interesting mm. to see how that goes by comparison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about the setup. You obviously yeah. set up full time in January. Yeah. You've got kilns, you've got just glass stock. I can't imagine that's cheap. No. Metal oxides. Unfortunately not. Yeah, it's not like just acrylic paint, you know. How did how did you manage that? And especially a lot of people that listen to this are other makers or people mm -hmm. just on the brink of becoming a fool. How did you manage that and the setup of it and mm. and what has that given you? Well, I, I guess it's it's different for me because I didn't when I started um, you know, creating my own work, I was um, just doing it hobby wise at first right. and I just picked up bits and pieces here and there I started looking on websites like eBay or like yeah. secondhand websites for I love eBay. kills I love or, eBay. yeah <laughs> it's great yeah. It's, it's perfect so I got um, I got that kiln um, for like 300 euros nice. wow. on the Dutch version of eBay I guess yeah um, so that was that was decent because kilns are usually really probably the most expensive part of your yeah. your entire setup. Uh, so I just started collecting here and there, and the the glass, um, it just keeps growing over time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, two year, maybe three years ago, I invested in getting a bigger kiln, um, but I. The only reason I did that is because I won um, a contest, so I won like oh, okay. well a done. cash yeah, prize, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I used that to get the kiln. But it's really it's hard because um, if you want to get started in stained glass, there's lots of tools and everything mm. you know you need to purchase. So um, my advice would be to just kind of like try and build it slowly and try and look on websites like eBay. A lot of stained glass people who retire. Yeah, and they passing their stuff down. Passing on all their stuff, yeah. Yeah, kind of build it as you go, isn't it? Because it'd be so it's so easy to be like to think you need this, this, yeah. this, 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 and you have to have a complete workshop just to yeah, get started. Which is insanely expensive if you mm -hmm. if you want to buy all of that new. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Costly. Very expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. Yeah. And what if you don't like it? You have to be ah, sure that yeah, you love yeah. it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, you mentioned the competition there. Have you entered many competitions with your work? And, and was, why uh, competitions? Well, that was the first one actually. Um, I have an aunt who's an artist. Uh, right. she, she works with oil paint and she entered that competition a couple of years prior. Um, it's, a, it's the Dutch Portrait Prize, it's called. Okay. Um, so it's for all portrait artists from the country and they can submit their work and be selected. And my aunt, she was telling me, well, maybe you should, you should submit your work. But I'm like, well, stained glass, I don't know. It's, they've never done that before. You yeah. know, usually it's just old oil paintings or yep. um, sculptures, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like really traditional. Um, but I just painted a portrait of my husband, yeah. which was one of the first works that I, you know, first completed stained glass windows that I did for my own. Um, so I submitted it and thought nothing of it and then I got selected and got through the next round and the next one and then um, eventually I got the Young Talent um, nice. Prize. Well done. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. We're in a, so, yeah, that we're was in a, a normal studio with things like that happen. It's fine. <laughs> so that was a bit of a plot twist. Um, so yeah. Amazing. It's, it's good because, I mean, we talk about competitions, don't we? Whenever. Competitions for me are just a bit hit or miss. Yeah. Um, Obviously, this one's been very good for you. It must have been a bit of a confidence builder as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, whereas some of the competitions I feel are maybe just out there to make money. Mm. And everyone needs to make money, of course mm -hmm. they do. But I do wonder the... Yeah. 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 That, that's another rant. No, I, I get it. I entered another uh, competition afterwards because I thought, well, you know what, maybe that would be good. But... um. I had a totally different experience with that one because I felt like it was just, 
you know, you had to pay like yes. an entry price of entry uh, yeah. price just to just to see who you are and what you do. Just to enter, yeah. and then yeah. I felt like it was. I don't know how to say that, but like um, they would always end up selecting the same group of people. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. So kind of like always the same crowd. It kind of felt. Clicky almost. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. what the word for yeah. that is in English, but yeah. Yeah. I know the feeling though. Yeah. I know the feeling. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you come across them a lot and it, it, it's quite hard. You know, a lot of people ask us, you know, we get a lot of DMs about like, oh, I've seen this competition. Like, what do you think? And the yeah. honest answer is I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Like, I have they're no idea. They're all different. They're all yeah, different. They're all totally different. Some people are really in it for the good of the, the sort of craft community. Yeah. Some not so much. Well, no. maybe they are, but they're in it for their little community, you know? Yeah. And that, that's also fine. Yeah. That is what it is. Talking about community, how have you found the communities? Because you kind of sit in between this community of stained glass and yeah. portraiture. Yeah. How have you found, or even just the community in the Netherlands in general for craft? How's that been? Um, it's good, good. I, I, so far, I really like the um, stained glass community. I'm more in the stained glass community right. as of in the, you know, art community, mm -hmm. I guess, because yeah. it's always kind of like this debate, what <laughs> what is stained glass? Is it a craft or is it art? It's always, mm -hmm. you know, it's a difficult yeah. question, but um, um, I love the stained glass community because everyone's so uh, warm and open mm -hmm. to sharing the knowledge, and which I think is really important because I think in the UK it was just announced that it's an endangered craft, mm -hmm. so yeah. um, there's not a lot of educational opportunities there's not a lot of resources in books or whatever so um you just I got love to write a book <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> she's only been full time since january I know, but you, can start you, <laughs> you can start just writing things down and then yeah. someday you might, you know, document all your work mm. um, do you recognize the importance of doing a craft like this like one that's just been announced as being an endangered craft do you recognize the stewardship it mm. comes with that. Do you know what I mean by Steward steward? No, I'm not so sure. So stewardship is like, we often refer to it with like old houses. When you move into an old house, you also become a steward of the building. Like you're okay. there to take so care of... Kind of like of, a keeper. Of, yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, that's a great, okay. yeah you're a keeper. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you kind of, do you feel that responsibility? Yeah, a little bit. Because um, it's just, it's such an, like it's an ancient craft and it would be such a shame if yeah. it just got lost completely. And I feel like by maybe giving it a little bit of a contemporary twist, mm -hmm. we can like make it go back into like, a make it part again yeah. of yeah, a bit of a resurgence. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's that's important because right now, it, I don't. I feel like stained glass has got a little bit of a dusty reputation, you know, because when you say stained glass, the first thing you think about is you know the yeah. big old church windows. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that, and I think did you if say a, we... Did you say a dusty reputation? Dusty. That's a great yeah. way to put it, isn't I was it? going to say dusty. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's a really nice way to put it. I don't want to, I don't want to sound offensive or anything, yeah. but no. uh, you know what I mean. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think by, you know, making it a little bit more contemporary, we could maybe work towards, you know, keeping the craft alive, making it more interesting nowadays. Well, you certainly are. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, it's a me try. Yeah, and making it more of a want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if someone was, you know, if someone wants a portrait, they go to a painter. Mm -hmm. If someone wants stained glass, they're probably a church. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there isn't really an in-between. And what you've done is brought this in-between into it. Mm. You know, the, the portraits, like the little um, 10 inch by 10 inch, 8 inch by 8 inch portraits and stuff. Like that, that is something... I don't feel stained glass until I've seen your, certainly your smaller work, and even this size work, had a place in the normal consumer home. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't feel like yeah. it had a place, because it was very oldie worldy, wasn't it? Yeah. Is that something you set out to do at the start? A little bit, yeah. Um, um, I mean, it's always going to be a luxury. Yeah. Like, art's always going to be a luxury yeah. for, for people, but um, it, I would like to you know, have people be aware that if they want a commission portrait or a commission piece, that it doesn't always have to be, you know, just an oil painting or... On paper. Yeah, yeah, that it can be something totally different as well. And what I like about stained glass is that if you place it in front of a window, you kind of get the dynamic with the light shining through. So mm. you can't really see it on here because it's a light table. But it changes like with every hour of the day because mm. 
uh, you know, it, like the morning light gives a different glow to it than the evening yes. light. So it's, yes. it really has its um, charms. It's a very different dynamic to a piece of art, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Like one that, like, exactly as you say, as the light hits it, it turns into something totally different. You know, even when we walked in here when the, the light table was off, mm -hmm. it's a completely different piece I know, of art you, now. Yeah, it's totally completely different. Completely different, <laughs> yeah. which is quite fascinating mm -hmm. to then have it hanging it. in the right space in a house yeah. with the sun either bouncing through it or bouncing off it. Yeah. Do you, when you do commissions like that, especially, I don't know if you've done many bigger commissions like this, do you ever go and see the space? Is there an element of your work that you have to see the space first? Not really. I've never done bigger pieces like this in commission before. Right. Um, but usually no, but um, I would probably do so if, if I would work on a bigger um, yeah. commission, if I would be able to do that, like if someone lived relatively close by. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it can be really important. Um, you know, it, it could be placed in front of a window, but if that if there's like a wall, like two meters yeah. from that window outside, it's still blocking the light, you know? So there's yeah. a lot of factors to, to calculate, um, which is also a little bit of a handicap, you know? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's like a painting, you can just hang on a wall anywhere, but here you have to like, Think it has to be in front of a window, or if you want to hang it on a wall, you have to be, you know, you have to have a light box. And, so it's also, Kind of annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It has to be very considered, doesn't it? Yeah, very like, much. It has to be very, very considered. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know the cost, but certainly the, the time that I can see goes into it. Yeah. It has to be a very considered purchase and then the it placement is. and and and, yeah. and 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 which is probably why mm -hmm. your courses do so well because that's accessible, right? Mm. What about the longevity of a piece like this? You know, we've all seen stained glass windows that are hundreds of years old yeah yeah because you were talking to me earlier about like this is like, you couldn't scratch that off no, even you if you can't. tried you it's baked in isn't it talk yeah. me through that a little bit um right so it's fired I'm, i don't know fahrenheit i just know that uh, celsius so it's fired yeah. at 650 degrees celsius yep um so that means that the the top layer of the glass um it can, the paint kind of melts into that mm -hmm. and then once it's cooled down it's become like a part permanent part of the glass so that means when the paint is fired in properly, it's there forever. It's never going right. to come off. But it also kind of depends on the elements. You know, if it's exposed to the elements, um, sometimes the glass might corrode after. Okay. But that's after hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and um, I've always been taught that lead should be replaced after 100 years. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's pretty... Um, it has a good long, longevity, is longevity, that longevity, yeah, yeah. longevity, yeah. yeah. And what do you think will happen to this piece? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I hope someone will buy it one day, maybe, but... Well, I um, think they will. For I now, it's just going to sit in front of my window. Buy that piece. Yeah. <laughs> Even just being in a gallery or something like that yeah. would be amazing. Do you have a cost in mind for a piece like that? Sorry? Oh. Do you have a cost in mind if someone was to approach you to buy it? Probably, well, cost is always tricky because um, I never keep track of my hours. But if I do, the price would probably be like insanely high. So that wouldn't be realistic anyway. Um, <laughs> Why would it not be realistic? Because it's just going to be way too expensive. Well, there'll always people. be someone that'll pay for it. Yeah. There'll always be someone, but you have to kind of like reach a level first when you... Well, oh, anyway. so you mean, yeah, you want to build a <laughs> reputation before you get there, yeah. Yeah, and so if you want to sell pieces, you probably have to go a bit lower with your price at first. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I usually just eyeball it a little bit. I would I would probably say like 4,000, like 4,000 euros. Really? As little as that? <laughs> I would, I would have... Well, I mean, it could be higher, but then no one would buy it, you know? So I would prefer to sell something for 4,000 euros and have those 4,000 yeah. euros. Yes, there is instead that. Instead of, you know, pricing it at 10,000 and then no one's buying it. So, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? That's always kind of like the yeah. tricky... Do you think balance. that comes with just being known more though like it's, it's a reach problem isn't it I it's think not so. really a cost problem it's like no because if the whole world knew about you mm -hmm. if the whole world had seen your work someone would pay for it yeah and i was having this discussion with um henry wood his name is not henry wood his instagram's name's henry wood <laughs> he makes great wooden sculptures hence yeah, henry that wood. makes sense um, <laughs> and i think one thing it's like it's a reach problem 
but it yeah, is. his work is phenomenal. Yeah, you can it's... you can totally see the time and the work that goes into it, as I can see with this. Mm -hmm. But to find the right customer, I know that's it's tricky. You need a million so people to have seen it, so I that know. the one person that could buy it would buy it, right? Yeah. Because uh -huh. there's so many people out there just yeah. finding your yeah. audience and people yeah. who are willing to pay what it's worth. That's why I'm really grateful for Instagram or like any kind of social media, even though it's a little bit of a love-hate relationship. But I mean, that's ultimately that's the way to reach the most, yeah. well, the most people, I think. I that's think. your primary mate. That's how we found you. Yeah, no, exactly. Through Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that's how you found us as well, wasn't it? Yeah, so, true. There you if, go. Have you ever tried YouTube? Yeah. Um, no, I haven't, but it, it's kind of, it feels a little bit intimidating to me because there's so many steps that are involved with, you know, filming. Yeah. yeah. That, um... It's a huge undertaking. I know. That's but it'd be so fascinating like A huge watch. amount of work that we're yeah. going to it, I think. It'd be fascinating to watch, though. I would, yeah, I, I know. would love I, to watch that. <laughs> I would. I would. Totally I feel like, on. yeah. There's this guy on YouTube, Baumgartner Restorations. Okay. Do you know that guy? No. no. He, he restores old oil oil paintings and then films the entire process and does a voiceover and it's just so satisfying to watch you know <laughs> yeah. and there's this huge following of people but it's who are just like in the rabbit hole watching him i know blinkers it's... on right and he explains like every little detail of what he's doing and it's super fascinating it's but a bit like florian gadsby the you know florian gadsby is the ceramicist he's potter okay. he's, he's huge um massive youtube channel yeah in the millions yeah huge. And, and he just like takes his time to like film every single process yeah. of making a pot uh -huh. and then he does his voiceovers and we did oh. a podcast with him and he was telling because you, you look at his videos and things it's just like it's effortless it just looks effortless but actually he's recorded that voiceover a million times yeah, right. just to get it the way mm -hmm. he wanted it so there what is, is it he told us he spends 12 hours a week which actually is not i was a lot just gonna say like you probably takes him just as much time to manage his YouTube as, you know, his art. But that's, that pays for his rent. Mm. So there is yeah. that aspect of that as his second job. Yeah. Um, because it brings him income. Right. But also his work seen by millions all over the world. And he's yeah. just published a book. That's what I was saying. He published a book from making pots for how many years? So he's just done his 10th year. Mm -hmm. He's just done his 10th year. And that's quite incredible to, to yeah. publish a book when he's our I think age. it's quite incredible for anyone to be in craft for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's be honest, the world doesn't give it the appreciation it deserves. No, no it's hard. Yeah. Because there's really a lot hard. of, a lot of knowledge goes into it. But mm -hmm. when you look at the wages you get paid, it's just not. Yeah. That's why you no, don't track it out. No, it's not balanced. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I so I'm it just together. feels, it feels weird because you, there's so many specific knowledge that goes into any craft, mm -hmm. but it's underappreciated. Mm -hmm. And that I think that um, demotivates a lot of people to actually pursue a craft. Yeah. What would you say to those people that are demotivated by it? Um, I would say that um, if you have a voice, kind of like a passion for something, um, it's probably best to just follow it and the rest will come eventually. Mm. That's what happened for me. I never thought of this as something I could make money from. Uh, I just started doing what I loved and then everything else just followed. Yeah. So you kind of like discover as you go. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's the best starting point. Yeah. Do something you really, really want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And I'll you'll find out eventually if it's growing into something you can live from or not. Mm -hmm. But at least you're doing what you what you love. Well, exactly like you said. Even in this short period of time, you've found that classes help to pay the bills. Yeah. So let's do classes. You know, that you're still doing what you love doing. Yeah. But there's there's different income sources around surrounding that, isn't there? No, exactly. Yeah. 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 And if you would have asked me two years ago if I would teach classes, I would have never said that I was going to do that. But you never you just never know where it where it takes you. Yeah. yeah. Do you think teaching those classes has helped you become less of an introvert? Yeah, for sure. It's also yeah. helped me build social skills. Like yeah. maybe that sounds funny, but um, yeah, definitely. You kind of, it, it's not like you're putting on a mask when you start teaching, mm -hmm. but it kind of is. I, I just don't don't really you're know. Just how put on your professional it. self, really. It's Isn't yeah. that maybe similar to when you do a po po podcast? Yeah. You yeah. kind of like put on your professional self, yeah. you know. Yeah. Try to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I try and bop and swear a lot less, put it that way, you know? You try, you try and be... Yeah. And it's probably the same in class. You, you try and 
you try and be the the best version of yourself for the people yeah. you're podcasting for or for the mm-hmm. people you're teaching. Yeah. You, no, you don't change yourself with regards to how you feel about you, but it's no. for those, it's, it's in service of, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a better way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Tell me, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Uh, ooh. Um, if I knew I couldn't fail, I would probably start making more personal work mm. and just reach for the stars, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start yeah. trying to to go for bigger commissions. Um, but to be honest, I'm not really sure where I want to go. Um, yeah. I, know, I don't really have way. like a five year plan or anything. I just want to, I know, I know that I want to work with stained glass and usually I just see what happens and what comes on my path. And um, yeah, it, it would, I would love to, you know, be able to continue paying my bills yeah. <laughs> from doing stained glass. Yeah. The five-year plan thing's interesting. I'm yet to speak to a maker yeah. who had a five-year plan really? and stuck to their five-year plan. Yeah, yeah no, that's even another us. thing because even if you have a plan, it's, chances the world are you're not like going to... Yeah, exactly. It it's going to change. Well, it's, it's good to have like a little bit of direction, I think. Absolutely, yeah. I think, yeah. I think aim for something, but don't necessarily turn down other things because you're so hardcore aiming at that. Yeah. You well, know? I think we give ourselves too big a goal. And then if you don't reach that goal, it's like, oh... Yeah, you, you kind of like feel quite disappointed. But yeah, you don't want to give set yourself, yourself for disappointment. Yeah, yeah, you want to give yourself yeah. smaller goals, reachable goals that you know that right. I've ticked that off. I've ticked that off. I've ticked that. Right. And if you do reach your big goal, great. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. Yeah, and you so, don't want to end up like in a tunnel vision of what exactly. you feel like you should be doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What about your goals for this? Have you set any? But, no, no. Uh, I mean, you if you would have asked me five years ago, like my, my dad, when I started working for a stained glass studio, my dad asked me, like, would you maybe ever want to, you know, become full time self employed or start your own business? I was like, oh my God, no, I don't really yeah. want to do that. Like, <laughs> funny, like that. I, I don't want to deal yeah. with, like, you know, administration and taxes and all that. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. So my goals for a couple of years ago, they aren't the same as yeah. what my what I'm doing now, and I'm glad they're not. <laughs> are your parents creative as well, or, um, or self-employed? They are, no, they're not self-employed. Uh, my dad is retired now. Yeah. Um, my mom, she is creative, but she never pursued it as a career. Um, but she paints and photographs. Nice. And my dad, he is creative, but more like in a technical aspect. So, yeah. um, like fixing up things. Um, building structures you know that kind of stuff nice so uh, it's kind of like a blend yeah. <laughs> yes, a blend. <laughs> i think that helps with doesn't it you've obviously been around people that can make things mm-hmm. whether it's photographs or painting or and whether they do it professionally or not it's yeah. just it's being aware that that is a thing that can happen in the world yeah you know, people can can make stuff no yeah exactly and my parents they always stimulated it for me but um they were also kind of nervous about it because they knew that art is a really hard branch to you know make money from so they were always yeah. a little bit you know um but you've unsure. proved that you can do it and it's yeah. you're loving it <laughs> well, so it's, far so good yeah. yeah how about now how's your mom and dad feeling about it all now good yeah they're kind of they're i um i don't think they they were expecting it to you know to be what it is now mm-hmm. but they're yeah they're they're, yeah, they're surprised, but proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. surprised in yeah. a good way, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's that must fill you yeah. with confidence going forward. Yeah, exactly. No, for sure. So what, you started full-time in January. Yeah. You're only a few months away from your first full year, full-time. Yep. Mm-hmm. What about next year's full-time goals? Do we have any short-term goals? I know we've not so much got long-term goals because as we've just discussed, they always yeah. change. Which I think is very healthy, by the way, like mm. recognising the fact that they will change. Yeah. What about short term? We talked a little bit about you were in the States, you've mm-hmm. done some stained glass conferences. What does is, what is yeah. your next, let's say, three, four, six months look like? Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to get back to the States in April to mm-hmm. teach more classes. Um, I'm moving studio next month, so uh, I'm going to be able to teach larger groups of students there. Um, I'm going to be on a TV show in the oh, Netherlands, actually. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, I don't know what, what's all that going to bring. Um, but um, that's all I know for now. And I hope to teach more 
But I also hope at the same time to start working on more commissions or maybe start selling my own work. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to work towards. towards. Mm. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll just see where, where it yeah. goes, you know. Well, we're looking with forward to seeing where you end up. And, yeah. and when you yeah. say selling your own work, you mean yeah. doing stuff like this that's just so. purely what you want to do yeah, and then put exactly. it up for sale. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The TV show in the Netherlands, is it, are you featuring in it as your craft? Yeah, it's, um, I'm not sure, but I think they have a similar TV show in the UK. It's where they ask like a, a well-known Dutch person, like a Dutch celebrity to um, come in for an interview. And then there are three art artists who paint or create a portrait of that celebrity. And then the celebrity gets to pick one of the portraits at the end of the, oh, cool. uh, oh, not heard that. the episode. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty well known in the Netherlands. Nice. Um, so really yeah, I did it with a stained glass portrait and yeah. should be aired next week, I think. So, oh really? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's really, I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> Don't be nervous, you've already done the hard work. Yeah, yeah. no, that's true. But the hardest part is, you know, knowing that people are going to be watching you, I think, mm. and, you know, going to have an opinion of you. So yeah. that's I think that's hard though, isn't it? When you're put into like, you know, telly or even like social media, it's like, what, yeah. do, you know, do these people's opinions matter? Mm. Yeah, but you know what the thing is, you just wanna, at the end of the day, you just wanna do what you love, which is creating, Yeah. but then you have to put yourself out there mm -hmm. to promote it. So it's kind of a necessary evil, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, unless, uh... We've talked about this often. I think the, the best creative couples are one that just does the creating and yeah. one that's really good at photography and social media. Yeah. That's perfect. Because <laughs> yeah. they can just be like, you do the creating bit, I'm I'll gonna deal there. with the business yeah. bit. Yeah, that would, would be great. Be the dream, right? <laughs> yeah. But we're not all in that situation, so Have I you digress. met a lot of those people? No, a lot none. Of couple, no. None. It's too bad. <laughs> Have we met any? I don't think we've met any. I think, you know, if there's a couple working together, like they're usually so like focused on their craft at, I don't know. I think social media seems to be... I'd say the guys at Banton Frameworks were the most like that. Yeah. They actually yeah. live very close to where we've just moved. They make um, handmade glasses frames. Really? And mm, Lucy is the hardcore maker. And Jamie deals with... He still makes. He yeah. still they wouldn't need, they need help, but he deals with the business side of it. Yeah. And they seem to have a... At least it came across that Lucy has a nice detachment from, let's be honest, the crap comments and the, yeah. the stuff that doesn't quite land, mm -hmm. whereas Jamie's really on the ball with that stuff. Yeah. I think I felt they had a good dynamic. Yeah. I mean, that, that may just be the way we picked up. They might listen to this and go, actually, it's rubbish. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find out. Yeah. So, but, yeah. So we've obviously ran around the country. I know you've got, you've got plans tonight, so I'm going to hand it over to Kate One last for question. a final question. Yeah, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, to probably stop worrying so much about, you know, things that don't really matter as much. Um, just, you know, do what you love and not let other people hold you back. Um, if there's one thing I've experienced in starting a creative career is that a lot of people will come to you with advice and usually like unsolicited advice. <laughs> <laughs> Always well intentions, yes. let's yeah. put that first, but um, it can be really confusing to kind of like navigate through it's very that. very true, yeah. Yeah, so um, and usually it's the people who, who are not creative themselves, you know, so it's kind of like hard to um, find your way through that, but just I would tell myself to not let me, let it, Get it, let it get to, in the way. Yeah, let it get to me or like throw me off balance, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think that's very good advice. Yeah. On advice. Yeah, yeah. that is good advice on <laughs> advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, where do people find you? Where do people find you? How do people book your courses? All right, well, I have a website. Um, I can say it, but it's in Dutch. So, that's, that's fine. fine. Glasaltierellen.com. Uh, and I'm on Instagram too, in the same name, Glas Atelier Ellen, and Facebook as well. Great. Nice. Yeah. So, we'll get all them off you. Yeah. And I'll <laughs> we'll put them in the show notes as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. I know. Thank it's you been for amazing. giving us hands on at your artwork and being able to see it up. It's so impressive. I know. I'm I was so, so excited when you got in touch. I was like, <laughs> I love her. 
Star Wars. Yeah. Yes, we're going to see her. <laughs> I, <can't laughs> I was so excited you replied. I was like, I no, she's probably not going you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. to. She's going to get plenty everybody. of messages. I know, yeah. I know. We do try and reply to everybody, <laughs> often at the detriment to our sleep. Yeah. Really? We'll, yeah, we'll set up at silly hour. Like people. Everyone's people around the world, know. right? So yeah. it's all different times. So you're kind of just trying to catch everybody at any time right. of time. So uh -huh. Yeah, the only thing I'd say is like a, a job in itself to keep up with yeah. all of that. It's admin, isn't yeah. it? Business admin, really, when yeah. you think about it. It's just like so many messages and you want to get back to everybody and it mm -hmm. can be difficult, but... Yeah, no matter where you are in the world, if you've had a DM from us, yeah. check what time it is in the UK when we've said that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's usually late or really, really? early. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we do try and get back to everyone because I think it's important. You know, like we talked about the stewardship of craft. Mm. Like, if people don't keep doing this, it mm. doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just not there. Like, how much yeah. stuff have we as a race forgot how to do because of mass manufacture? Mm -hmm. You'd be amazed the amount of guys, certainly in my previous job that would come to the workshop and just not know how to do anything basic, yeah. read a tape measure, mm. you know, stuff like that. And yeah, it's worrying. Hands, the, hand on skills is, is so hand important, on skills especially really things that yeah. work like this. Like, I agree. You don't yeah. see that every day. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> you do. And it's, so, it's more amazing in person. Oh, thank you. Sure. So anybody, do more of them. yeah, do more of them. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. Listens, I'll try. Buy them. <laughs> well, thanks again. Thanks so much. We're going to let you get on with your your evening, and we've got dinner with your parents, and we are going to find somewhere to sleep tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for yeah. having me. Thank you. I hope that was 